Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. So this video is going to be, well, as you can see, a variety of sanding tools that are on the counter over here. Then this is what the video is going to be about. So if you're not interested, go ahead and, you know, change the channel, whatever you do. If you are interested, then that's cool. Stay tuned and watch. All right, what's going on? So I have got some tools on the table over here, the workbench, whatever you want to call it, that I've been using for working on guitars, finishes, or stripping finishes, polishing finishes, whatever you want to call it. So I want to kind of go over some of the tools and how they work and what you could possibly benefit from by using the tools and using them correctly. So my background comes a lot from auto body and doing body and fender work uh, using filler and stuff on you know certain parts of wavy metal and believe it or not that uh, when you're using a like an 80 grit or 40 grit sandpaper uh, you're actually cutting metal and you can leave a divot in the metal so and then you only use like 40 or 80 grit paper anyways if you're going to put some type of a filler coat on top of the metal of a vehicle. So that's not going to transfer through the bondo or filler. And when it shrinks, you won't see it. Then you're going to use your sanding blocks and whatnots to level sand that down and feather out on the edges before priming. So totally different scenario, but it has a lot to do with kind of what I'm doing with guitars and stuff like that. Now, I'm not using bondo and body fillers and stuff like that on guitars, although I have seen some guitars that could probably have used it, um, but nevertheless. So what we got here are different varieties of things for sanding. You got your power tools, which in the automotive, they call it a DA, they're air tools, air sanders, and uh, I've got two bigger ones and then one palm sander that's an air tool in the garage I also have a um, air file which is a machine that is pretty long I want to say it's either 18 or 15 inches long and it uses flat strips of sandpaper that are 80 grit 40 grit or whatever um, but they are not um, peel and stick or Velcro. They are, have got little clamps on the sides that you put the paper under, fold it, and then go across to the other side of the clamp and clamp that side into. But that's a use for auto body. What I'm using here is I've got an electric palm sander and it's a rotary sander. It works very nicely. It's got an adaptive. I can either connect it to my vacuum or I can connect it with the little somewhat of a collection dust collection thing that it comes with i'd rather use the vacuum on it because that little dust collector doesn't work very very well now this one here is a skill uh, it works really good it's got an adjustment on the side for uh, rpm so you adjust your speed i also have some blocks here that i use and there's different varieties of blocks like we have what's called duro blocks inside the garage and they are different length blocks uh, i believe the biggest one is either 15 or 18 inches long and it drops all the way down to like a little blocks about you know about the size of these guys here and those blocks have metal rods that go inside of them to keep them stiff and they are made of a harder foam rubber but when you're working on a body of a vehicle you know you want to contour those blocks somewhat with the vehicle but if you are using them on a flat surface well you would add these rods into the blocks and it would keep them stiff to where they won't uh bend on you at all especially if you're adding a little bit of downforce when you're applying pressure for sanding but again that's auto body this is guitar work so in different techniques that i use for different stuff now this is a wet sanding block that sometimes i'll use it and sometimes most of the time i don't um but i'll use this with some 800 grit sandpaper or 400 grit sandpaper what you end up doing is you saturate your paper you know you gotta leave it in there for a good length of time and you could tell by the color of the paper the backing of especially with 3m paper um that 
it absor- has absorbed enough water to where you can start using it changes color a little bit and what you would do is you get the sheet and you stick it inside this side put it in clamp it put stretch it put it on this side inside clamp it now the only problem with this is you waste paper because you have the amount of paper that goes in here and in here that now has holes in it from the little teeth that are inside here that hold the paper in place the problem with this block here is you waste paper you can't use the, those that side of the paper anymore because you punctured holes in it if you try to those holes or those the way that the paper was punctured can leave marks in your finish or even in say if you're doing using for dry sanding uh can even leave those marks in the wood making it um well you'll just see grooves and stuff that are cut into and you really don't want that you want to have a nice flat surface but i do use that block for certain surfaces that i'm working on if i want to cut a bigger area a little bit faster and then i have Here's another plastic block that is completely flat. And what I could do with this is I can either do wet sanding with it or dry sanding. Dry sanding, I will put a peel and stick paper on here. Usually it's a 220 or 320 grit roll. And I'll cut a piece, it'll fit on this thing, and I can use this without having to hold the paper. The adhesive holds the paper for me. Or if I'm doing wet sanding, I can wrap the paper around this, holding it on both sides because it's got you know a good side over here where I can grip and hold the paper in place. And I can wet sand a flat surface with this with no problems. Just making sure though that this area over here is nice and clean and there is no debris or anything that is between your paper and the block because that will transfer into your finish or if you're dry sanding they'll transfer into the wood and leaving a line of some sort. Another block that I use here is this foam rubber block that's just very flexible but yet it's a little bit on the dense side. I'll use this for the tops of, say, like a Les Paul, uh, an arch top, or something that's got a lot of uh, characteristics in the top to where the body kind of flows and there's curves and stuff. I will use this block here because it will follow. And as you can see, it's kind of got a little bit of a curve to it already. And that's because of how I use this with going on a Les Paul body. This I only use for wet sanding. And I'll wrap the paper on here. And as I'm, like, say, on a Les Paul, as I'm sanding it, it just follows that curve with no problems. And it's not stiff enough to where one edge or this edge will put more pressure because it's being curved, it's being forced. So these sides here are being forced down to where it's not going to cut and leave a line or groove in the finish. It just kind of works out pretty nice to where it follows everything really nice. And I'm able to get a nice even sanding before polishing with this. Again, this is for like surfaces, curved surfaces and stuff like that. For doing horns on say a Les Paul or a Strat style or even a Telecaster, I will use this. And now if I'm stripping, I'll put a piece of tape on here or paper that's got sticky right now this is kind of sticky i have to clean it from the last time i used it i haven't used it in a little bit and i've been doing everything kind of freehanded and what this works out great for is getting into those tighter curves between horns and keeping that surface nice and flat while the edges are still kind of curved without having any problems with it and again i'll use this either for wet sanding or dry sanding with a, a paper that's got the adhesive up on the back of a peel and stick. Now, another thing that I'll use is the electric rotary sander. Now, here's where it gets a little bit confusing because I've seen people kind of do this in the past with using the foam pad for and sanding a flat surface. <clears throat> and I'm not nitpicking or anything with you guys. It's just that um, you you'll see now. When you use a foam pad, you're, you're going to use a foam pad on surfaces that have some curves to it, okay? And what happens is that foam pad, this is not like real stiff foam at all. And what happens is you got a curve, that pad is going to follow the curves. And what's made for is not to like dig in to areas that are kind of curved and stuff like that to where you can get a nice sanded finish out of it. And uh, 
it's not going to be flat. It'll still have that curve. For doing like the back of a Les Paul or doing something like the, the bass guitar, for instance, I will use, if I want a nice flat surface, no pad on this. Because what happens is is the pad is going to follow any like imperfections in the wood or the finish, and it'll show that it's been sanded. So if you have, say, a... Uh, in my case, I had a um, Squire Strat Bullet. It was one of the first guitars that I've ever finished. And it had to where it's four pieces of wood to where the wood was kind of swollen. And you could see the wood through the finish, the lines, the edges of the wood through the finish. And if I were to use with the foam pad on something like that, what's going to happen is, is the foam pad, if you have wood that it's sticking up a little bit higher the foam pad instead of flattening this out completely it's going to round off that edge where the other piece of wood is sticking up and what it's going to do is just going to create waves it's not going to be a flat surface using without the pad creates a nice flat surface you are going to cut into the wood depending on how much wood is sticking up but it'll be nice and even and on the squire jaguar base there, you can already see in the areas over here that I just went over, this is not flat. This has got a, a dip here, it's got a dip here, it's got a dip over here, and a small dip here. And it looks like this area over here has also got a low spot as well. It's a good example of using a flat compared to what would happen if I were to use this. It showed what using the flat, the lower spots and the higher spots that were in the finish and I was able to sand that completely out and it was just in the finish not in the wood so another thing is sanding by hand all right you're really roughing it because you're not using any tools so here we have a black glossy piece of plastic all right and this is a old pick guard I don't know where it, I know it came from an SG but was never used and I don't like to pick guards up. Anyway, so now you take a piece of sandpaper. Uh, this is 1500 grit. I want something that's going to show a lot. All right, so here's a piece of, I believe it's 800 or 400. I can't tell. I could tell by the feel of it. And it possibly is, that's uh, about an 800 grit sandpaper. So another thing is, is sanding, all right? So if you're going to sand, and there's a, a different way of doing this compared to the wrong way of doing this and the right way of doing this. I'm gonna show you the wrong way of doing this. So if you're sanding by hand, and you're sanding like this, okay? Can you see the scratch marks from each finger? I know you can because it's showing straight up in the plastic. So if you're sanding like that, that is wrong, okay? You don't want to sand like that. What happens if you sand a finish like this, regardless if you are doing buffing or if you are sanding a finish for a next, uh, say, coat of paint or, or clear coat, you will see this and it will cause waves in your finish. The right way of sanding is going side to side. As you can see, it kind of blended in the finger lines. You don't want to sit there and go with like this with your sandpaper. You want to go like this with your sandpaper. And this is the proof right here of showing you on this piece of plastic what happens. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Hopefully these tips help you guys out. And again, for flat surfaces, don't use the foam pad. Don't use a foam pad for wet sanding on flat surfaces. Use something that is made and stiff and hard for flat surfaces. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a good one. I will catch up with you later.